In this video we will talk about King Herod and the Herodian dynasty, but before that I will talk about a very important event which is the massacre of the innocents. The Star of Bethlehem, or Christmas Star, appears only in the Nativity story of the Gospel of Matthew, where wise men from the East, Magi, are inspired by the star to travel to Jerusalem. There they meet King Herod of Judea, and ask, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We have come to pay homage to the newborn King of the Jews. Herod calls his scribes and priests who quote to him that a verse from the book of Micah interpreted as a prophecy, states that the Jewish Messiah would be born in Bethlehem to the south of Jerusalem. Secretly intending to find and kill the Messiah in order to preserve his own kingship, Herod invites the wise men to return to him on their way home. If the soothsayers of the time were correct, the birth of a new king of the Jews was imminent and threatened Herod's position. In the massacre of newborn babies of Bethlehem found in the Nativity story and King Herod is portrayed as a tyrant prepared to kill infants who could eventually challenge him. However, the historical evidence for the event is only biblical and in fact only one verse in Matthew mentions it. The event is notably absent from the other Gospels. It seems difficult to imagine such a massacre was not mentioned by Josephus, a first century historian who described other events in Herod's life. One could be a skeptical of Matthew's account of a massacre of infants. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Matthew. Most modern biographers of Herod, and probably a majority of biblical scholars, dismiss Matthew's story as an invention. It appears to be modeled on Pharaoh's attempt to kill the Israelite children, in that expanded story. Pharaoh kills the Hebrew children after his scribes warn him of the impending birth of the threat to his crown, that is, Moses, but Moses's father and mother are warned in a dream that the child's life is in danger and act to save him. Later in life, after Moses has to flee, like Jesus, he returns only when those who sought his death are themselves dead. The story assumed an important place in later Christian tradition. Byzantine liturgy estimated 14,000 holy innocents, while an early Syrian list of saints stated the number at 64,000. Coptic sources raise the number to 144,000 and place the event on the 29th of December. The Catholic Church has claimed the children murdered in Jesus' stead as the first Christian martyrs, and their feast, Holy Innocents Day, or the Feast of the Holy Innocents, is celebrated on the 28th of December. Taking the narrative literally and judging from the estimated population of Bethlehem, the Catholic Encyclopedia more soberly suggested that these numbers were inflated, and that probably only between six and twenty children were killed in the town, with a dozen or so more in the surrounding areas, simply because Bethlehem was a village of about 1,500 residents. Bethlehem at the time wouldn't have had more than about two dozen babies two years old and under, half of them female. The flight into Egypt is a story recounted in the Gospel of Matthew and in New Testament Apocrypha. Soon after the visit by the Magi, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream telling him to flee to Egypt with Mary and the infant Jesus since King Herod would seek the child to kill him. The episode is frequently shown in art, as the final episode of the Nativity of Jesus in art, and was a common component in cycles of the life of the Virgin Mary as well as the life of Christ. In Islam, the Quran neither mentions this supposed massacre, nor the trip to Egypt, although Pharaoh's attempt to kill the Israelite children was mentioned in details. King Herod the Romans appointed King Herod as king of Judea in 37 BC. 
fact historians agree that in many respects Herod had a hugely successful reign. King Herod, ethnically Arab but a practicing Jew, increased the land he governed from Palestine to parts of modern Jordan, Lebanon and Syria constructing fortresses, aqueducts and amphitheaters and earned him the title Herod's Magnus, Herod the Great. The Romans also gave Herod the title King of the Jews because of the Jewish population he ruled. If we are ever asked which is the one figure from the ancient world on which we have more primary evidence from original sources than anyone else in the world, the answer is not Jesus or Saint Paul or Caesar Augustus or Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great. No. It's Herod the Great. Why? Because Josephus the historian gives us two whole book scrolls on the life of Herod the Great. And that is more primary material than anyone else. He was a very remarkably successful politician keeping the peace between Rome, which had conquered Judea ever since 63 BC, and he acted as a Roman governor overseas. He is simply known as a client king, meaning very often when the Romans conquered a province they didn't want to send a governor out. There was a local king doing a good enough job and so yes he may be called king, but he was definitely deferent to Rome for his whole administration. He was in charge from 40 BC when he was awarded the title king. He didn't actually take control of the land until, with Roman help, he drove some adversaries out of Jerusalem and early from about 37 BC on he is in charge until his death in 4 AD. Actually he was remarkably successful in a lot of ways. He deserves the title Herod the Great if we talk about his accomplishments through much of his life. He was the one, who rebuilt the great temple in Jerusalem. He was the one who built the city of Caesarea and its vital port in the Holy Land. In Jerusalem he renovated the entire city in addition to building a gorgeous palace for himself. He had a stadium and theatres and so forth. He was kind of a Hellenistic monarch. And he also built seven great fortresses across the land, strong points from which he could defend his administration. He kept peace both with Jerusalem and Rome, and so in that sense he was very successful. But there's another side to Herod which is the paranoid side of Herod that begins to emerge later in his life. Basically he was responsible for many of the problems in his home because he married ten wives and each of those produced princes for him and each of those male princes was scheming to succeed him. Josephus gives us just a hideous tale of what was going on in the family, attempted poisonings, one brother against another. It so rattled Herod that he actually put to death three of his own sons on suspicion of treason. He put to death his favorite wife out of ten of them, Mariamy was his favorite. She was a Hasmonean Maccabean princess and he put her to death and then he killed his mother-in-law. At one point late in his life, Herod plots to kill a stadium full of Jewish leaders. The plot fails, but what does it reveal about him? Well, Josephus has a very grisly thing to report about Herod in his last months. He was paranoid, though he did have some grasp of reality. For instance, he was worried that nobody would mourn his own death. Of course that shows how deadly accurate he was. They were preparing a general celebration. And nobody likes to die knowing that people are going to dance on his grave. And so he was going to give the people something to cry about. In 4 AD he is in his winter palace in Jericho. It's the only place in the Holy Land that doesn't snow or get cold in the winter. It's 1200 feet below sea level. And Herod is dying. He tries every remedy in the world, he went to the hot springs on the northeastern corner of the Dead Sea but he remained sick. So he goes back to his winter palace and he invites his sister Salomon and he says, I want you to arrest all the Jewish leaders in the land and imprison them in the hippodrome just below the palace here. She does so and then she says, brother, 
why am I doing this? And Herod says, well, I know that when I die the Jews are going to rejoice. So I want to give them something to cry about. And so he wants these leaders all executed in that hippodrome so that there will be thousands of households weeping at the time Herod the Great dies. Herod Antipas Born before 20 BC, died after 39 AD, was a first century ruler of Galilee and Pera, who bore the title of Tetrarch, ruler of a quarter, and is referred to as both Herod the Tetrarch and King Herod in the New Testament although he never held the title of king. He is widely known for accounts in the New Testament of his role in events that led to the executions of John the Baptist and Jesus of Nazareth. After being recognized by Augustus upon the death of his father, Herod the Great, Antipas officially ruled Galilee and Pera as a client state of the Roman Empire. He was responsible for the construction of his capital Tiberias on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. Named in honor of his patron, the Emperor Tiberius, who had succeeded Augustus as emperor in 14 AD, the city later became a center of rabbinic learning. Antipas divorced his first wife, in favor of Herodias, who had formerly been married to his half-brother Herod II. Antipas faced more immediate problems in his own tetrarchy after John the Baptist, in 28-29 AD according to the Gospel of Luke began a ministry of preaching and baptism by the Jordan River, which marked the western edge of Antipas' territory of Pera. The New Testament Gospels state that John attacked the Tetrarch's marriage as contrary to Jewish law, it was incestuous, as Herodias was also Antipas' niece, but also John criticized the fact that she was his brother's wife, while Josephus says that John's public influence made Antipas fearful of rebellion. John was imprisoned in Macarus and executed. According to Matthew and Mark, Herod was reluctant to order John's death but was compelled by Herodias' daughter, Salome, to whom he had promised any reward she chose as a result of her dancing for guests at his birthday banquet. In 39 AD Antipas was accused by his nephew Agrippa I of conspiracy against the new Roman Emperor Caligula, who sent him into exile in Gaul. Accompanied by Herodias, he died at an unknown date. The Gospel of Luke states that Jesus was first brought before Pontius Pilate for trial, since Pilate was the governor of Roman Judea, which encompassed Jerusalem where Jesus was arrested. Pilate initially handed him over to Antipas, in whose territory Jesus had been most active, but Antipas sent him back to Pilate's court. Herod Agrippa I. Between 41 and 44 AD, Judea regained its nominal autonomy, when Herod Agrippa was made king of the Jews by the Emperor Claudius, thus in a sense restoring the Herodian dynasty, although there is no indication Judea ceased to be a Roman province simply because it no longer had a prefect. Claudius had decided to allow, across the empire, procurators, who had been personal agents to the emperor often serving as provincial tax and finance ministers, to be elevated to governing magistrates with full state authority to keep the peace. He elevated Judea's procurator whom he trusted to imperial governing status because the imperial legate of Syria was not sympathetic to the Judeans. Was a king of Judea from 41 to 44 AD. He was the father of Herod Agrippa II, the last king from the Herodian dynasty. Agrippa's territory comprised most of modern Israel, including Judea, Galilee, Badania, and Pera. His zeal, private and public, for Judaism is recorded by Josephus, at the risk of his own life or at least of his liberty, he interceded with Caligula on behalf of the Jews, when their emperor was attempting to set up his statue in the temple at Jerusalem shortly before his death in 41 AD. Agrippa's efforts bore fruit and persuaded Caligula to temporarily rescind his order thus prevented the temple's desecration. The Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 12, 
where Herod Agrippa is called King Herod, report that he persecuted the Jerusalem church, having James son of Zebody killed and imprisoning Peter around the time of the Passover. Herod Agrippa II. He was the eighth and last ruler from the Herodian dynasty. He was the fifth member of this dynasty to bear the title of king. Agrippa was overthrown by his Jewish subjects in 66 AD and supported the Roman side in the First Jewish-Roman War. It was before Agrippa and his sister Berenice that, according to the New Testament, Paul the Apostle pleaded his case at Caesarea Maritima, possibly in 59 AD. Agrippa expended large sums in beautifying Jerusalem and other cities, especially Beritus, ancient Beirut, a Hellenized city in Phoenicia. His partiality for the latter rendered him unpopular amongst his own subjects, and the capricious manner in which he appointed and deposed the high priests made him disliked by his coeligionists. War with Rome in the seventeenth year of Agrippa's reign, corresponding with the twelfth year of Nero's reign, or 66 AD, Agrippa tried desperately to avert a war with Rome, when he saw his countrymen generally disposed to fight against Rome, because of certain insults and abuses they had had under the Roman procurator, Gessius Florus. At this time, they had broken off the cloisters, covered walk, leading from Antonia Fortress to the Temple Mount where Roman soldiers keep guard during the Jewish holidays, and they refused to pay the tribute which was due to Caesar. Agrippa convened the people and urged instead that they tolerate the temporary injustices done to them and submit themselves to Roman hegemony. At length, Agrippa failed to prevent his subjects from rebelling, by 66 the citizenry of Jerusalem expelled their king Agrippa, and his sister, Berenice, from Jerusalem. During the first Jewish-Roman war of 66 to 73 AD, he sent 2,000 men, archers and cavalry, to support Vespasian, showing that, although a Jew in religion, he was entirely devoted to the Roman Empire. After the capture of Jerusalem, he went with his sister Berenice to Rome, where he was rewarded with additional territory, 